Hello and welcome back to We Can Walk About in Our Gardens and Years Virtually. We're talking about growing from seed today. This is GardenAZ.org. Um, I'm Janet. I'm Stephen. And we're moving into chapter two about handling the seed. Easy seed and not easy seed. Um, that's Stephen. Mm, there. <laughs> Stephen and I both gar gardened professionally for 40 years. We're retired now from the physical part of gardening for other people and we're now gardening, making up for all of the promises we've made to family and friends, friends over the years about helping them. And we're still writing and teaching because we think we need to keep doing that. And uh, our daughter, Sonia Nicola, is moderating the chat, answering questions, lining them up for us. She's an excellent gardener, uh, ha always has been. She's also a professor at a university where she knows this virtual technology very well, so she can help you with technical questions as well as line up our gardening questions. And we're very fortunate to have our, our, our buddy, Karen Bovio, with us today. She is the just retired, don't ask her about the nursery, mm -hmm. it's gone. She gets to see her own garden come up this spring. Um, Karen Bovio garden uh, professionally for 40 years, growing thousands and well, probably millions of plants from seed and is, is helping us today. Thanks, Karen. Um, you can read our articles in GardenAtoZ.org as well as our books and uh, over the years, magazines and papers. We want <coughs> to keep people talking because we learn a lot and we are able to help other people learn a lot this way. The outline that we'll sh we're showing you as we go along is available on our website, or you can look in chat and download it from the link in the chat today. Yeah. Easy seed. Easy seed is seed that has no inhibitors to germination, um, or call it dormancy that has to be overcome. Um, there are seeds that you just put them into moist, moist, warmish soil, and they they uh, they germinate. But there are, and those are. Um, those are the easy seed, including tiny seed. I'm pretty sure this is scarlet campion, but I've forgotten now what it was that I scattered. And went, I mean, what do you do with little teeny tiny seeds that are that small? Um, look at the different sizes here. We've got nasturtium, the big honker seeds up there on the side, and the little tiny impatient seeds and parsley seeds and alyssum seeds. Um, the, it's a challenge for gardeners to handle these seeds because they're expensive and because you don't want Gardeners do not want to have too many seeds coming up because if you do, you start finding yourself on people's doorsteps, forcing plants on other because people. Because you can't call them. Yeah. So um, we uh, we take these little tiny seeds and, and tap them out of the package. Or um, if we can get done here in time, we'll show you on the table in front of us today what we do with them. Um, I asked Karen, what do you do with these little tiny seeds like impatient seeds? How do you handle those? I like the way you described it. Tap, tap, tap. <laughs> I, I like to do the same thing. You crease the little, there's usually an inner envelope, maybe not always, but crease your seed packet. And after a while, you will get the hang of handling that packet in such a way that you can gently tap and just watch the seeds fall out in a little line. Of course, you can also just pick them up and do a little sprinkle if you're doing it like in a pot. But we always sewed ours in drills or rows using repurposed um, produce containers that were very shallow, shallow ones that are about an inch and a half deep so that they don't stay soggy wet. That worked out really well for us, but the tap, tap, tap into rows makes it so that you have really easy plants to transplant because they're all gonna come off of the row like little soldiers in a row. And you, you can, you have to like, you really have to de develop a technique for tapping. And that's, that's the way we did it. And on the seed, I, I got some seed uh, sowers that were supposed to help with tiny seed like that. And I found that they were just tap, 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 tap everybody. Yeah. <laughs> the same thing. Um, and the bigger seeds, of course, you can just pick up. I mean, look at those guys. They're, they're boulders. The histrician is boulders compared to impatience. Um, okay. Um, and put it onto media that's, that's level. Um, I take the pot and and I call it tamping it. I just set I'm the sorry. pot down a couple of times because you want it to be firm so that your seeds all going down at one level. And I usually put down about twice as many seeds as I need. Um, that's probably going to mean I have to thin some things out, but some seeds, um, the 50% germination is about what you expect with that. How, do you do you have any any guideline that you use for how much seed to put down? Um. 
I'm going to address the moist firmed media first because this is very important because you want the media to be firmed down to drive out excess air. I mentioned earlier about compressing. You want some air, but you don't want so much air so that if that seed germinates, it's going to put down its um, little baby root into air. Yeah. So, so that's another technique that you just have to practice. And I like that you mentioned avoid the stagnant corners. A lot of people aren't very serious about getting that soil level. And I think that makes a big difference in the survivability of all of your seedlings. And it's hard to say, like when you're dealing with really, really tiny seeds like Petunia or Nicotiana, how many seeds extra you're putting down but yes it's okay. always wise it's always wise to sow more than you need because no seed has really got a hundred well i shouldn't say no seed but very few have a hundred percent germination yeah so you do want to sow extra but then you have to give them away or be ruthless and throw them on the compost yeah a hard gonna, thing to do we, we do get ruthless and i i tell people fill the pot you, you want just enough to be able to, to hold a little moisture when you water if you're watering from the top but you don't want it um, a big space because then the air doesn't move across the seedlings. And exactly. You're, you're that's that's huge. That's that's yeah. a big big uh, preventative measure against stamping off. Yeah, and and there's a corner right here. Right. It's a pocket. That's a pocket, and that that pocket is where a seed is going to fall into, and you get lost, or where air will not move. So make sure that you fill it properly. Um, and if you're going to sow more than one kind of seed into the same container, the germination requirements have to match. And it's not a good idea. <laughs> it's, not a, it's not a good idea to mix them. But if you do mix them, they need to both germinate in, in warm or cool or in three weeks or in two weeks. Um, otherwise, you're, you're in trouble. Um, that there's a reason that growers like Karen grow one flat of something uh, or one when in their germination, when she's using the, the little sh um, shallow containers that she's got one kind of seed in each container. Uh, because if you mix them up, as my son did here, the kids had fun planting the seeds, it's true, but the bean's gonna be too tall. You can't have it. it, it if it's gonna be in the light, it's too, the light's too far away from the other ones. They germinate at different times. They need different, just different don't, water, don't, different, don't mix yeah. them up if you can help it. Which is why these wildflower mixes that you get, um, look at all the different kinds of seeds that are in there. I'm trying to remember how many different things are in there. One, two, three, seven, eight, nine different plants in there. Um, at least. Yeah, you're really gonna to wanna to sow that seed outside. <laughs> And, and let it come up outside. Now I'm breaking that rule today. If we can get to um, looking at what we've got on the table here, because I have a, I have large containers here that I'm going to move out quickly, and just a couple of special seeds. I'm not starting a lot of stuff this year. That's a, a big leaf magnolia with leaves the size of newspaper pages. Huge. Um, and uh, there's a uh, Chinese jujube. Uh, these, these guys. guys right there. And then this one is something related to Peronia, and I've forgotten its name. We got these out of Tony Reznicek, uh, our rock garden, uh, gardening Thanks. expert friend, handed me the seeds as we walked by, and I was interested in them. So um, we're going to mix some things together. Do you cover the seed? The rule of thumb is, however, di however big the seed is, cover it by its own diameter or twice the diameter. But if it requires light, you leave it on the surface. And there are some tiny seeds that need dark and you cover them up with uh, something dark until they germinate. This is um, blackberry lily, vellum canda. It's a big seed, so it's easy to see. I just poke that into the soil to its depth or deeper to get it to, to um, come up. It's a beautiful seed. I love blackberry lily and it's very easy. My client was constantly giving people blackberry yeah. lilies because she loved playing with the seed. Um, label it. <laughs> Label it, label it, label it. Don't wait an hour. Don't wait, don't figure you'll remember <laughs> tomorrow what it is and when you sowed it, you can label that right away because you will not remember. I don't remember what I had for, I don't remember if I had breakfast. I, yeah. Today probably. Yeah, so look at what the pros are doing. Here's the, the uh, cold frames at Betty Ford Alpine Garden. So these are the pros working here. And Steve assures me he did not open the cold frames, that no. they opened them themselves when they needed to be opened. And everything in there is labeled. Every single one is labeled. 
all different stuff, all different times, because you're not going to remember later. This is at Seed Savers Exchange, the largest private seed <laughs> storage facility in the world. And uh, they're Every, labeled. Everything, everything yeah. is absolutely labeled. Um, after you get the seed in and either covered or laid out, close a transparent cover or put a plastic bag, something to help keep it moist. You don't want seed to dry out when it's germinating, which is why these covers on the containers are great. You can open them up later to let the yeah. air move around them. Yeah. Um, we have Cody helping us out here. Where is some cuttings he's working with. We do the same thing with seed. We put straws, just drinking straws. They're, they're sterile and we stuck them in the potting mix, put a plastic baggie around there and then a rubber band to hold the plastic baggie and we've made a little terrarium. Whatever it takes, because at nurseries they do the same thing. Whatever it takes, we got to keep it moist underneath there, because we got a bunch of uh, cuttings of coleus under there. Whatever it takes. Yep. Then you put it in a place where it's going to be the right temperature. 55 is cool, 70 to 80 is warm. Planting media is always a little cooler than the air. So if your your thermostat set at 70, your 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 potting mix is cooler than that. A lot of books still say top of the refrigerator, but these new refrigerators are you too don't feel much heat. <laughs> um, cool. I, this is a fire spray, Heuchera. I love just plain old species, Heuchera sanguinea. The hummingbird loved it, and I had to start them from seed. And they, they took cool temperatures. Um, they went into our back unheated room, and they germinated really well. Just fine. Um, they're letting the seed finish ripening here at uh, Glasshouse Works on their Clivia, those pretty little seed pods, uh, in an unheated porch through the winter time. Um, direct sowing, I think it's great. I uh, most of the seed I've got this year is going to be direct mm -hmm. sowed. So you plant it where it's going to grow. Um, Bells of Ireland need it cool. Um, it doesn't say that on the back of this package here, but I know that they need some time cool and they're going to germinate erratically. I'm going to put them out in the car. I love Bells of Ireland. I just, you have to pull the leaves off in order to, or clip the leaves off in order to have the seed, uh, the, the flowering structures like this to use, but they're such a cool plant. And you can't buy those any place. That's, that's because they're terrible to grow in a pack or in a, in a seed flat. And then they just, they have to go in the ground. They're just a real, real difficult plant to make nice in, the, in a nursery. They just, yep. they just behave. I put got them in the ground. Last year, I put them in a little too late. And it was, it was the soil wasn't cool enough, long enough. So I only got a few to germinate. So they're going out today. I'll, um, the, I'll, put, them in, uh, I'll put them on the ground, on the snow because there's still some snow left out there. And then I'll just spread a little bit of potting mix on top of them so that I know that that place is there and they'll be fine and they'll sprout. Steve points out that they're beautiful little bells. The seeds their seeds are, are bells. <laughs> Do they call it bells of Ireland because of the flower? Because of the seed. <laughs> and uh, one of the markers that I use, which is problematic, but it works for me because I'm out there in the garden doing things. I spread some dill seed here. So I take the dill stalk and I peg it down. There's two pieces of wood crossed holding it down. Better to use a little piece of wire because it, um, it is obvious that it happened that way. But that way, even if I didn't do anything else, I know that coming up there are my dill seeds. I go, oh yeah, that's right. I spread some Pretty dill good. over here. Usually I find that out too late. I go, oh shoot. What did I put over here? Some things I don't mark. Um, these are uh, the lupins that are blooming over to the left edge. And they are, that's Uncle Axel's lupin, our Steve's great uncle Axel collected and kept uh, selecting for the purples and the blues of those lupins and we still grow them. And we'll just grab the seed um, as it ripens. We always let some ripen on the plant and we spread it around. And we're really glad that we, we learned to do that and that we spread some at Sonia's house mm -hmm. because when we moved, we didn't have it anymore. And Sonia was able to give us back the seed and continue the line. And we don't mark where they are. We just spread them anywhere. They, they end up everywhere eventually themselves. Or you can <clears throat> plant them in a pot and put the pot outside. This is a, I take Dixie cups and, and you stab them with a knife in the bottom to break open. And then you can just put the pot outside. Um, now, some seeds do have dormancy. It's a timing mechanism. If, if this seedling germinates three days before a killing frost, well, you're not going to have seedlings. So there yeah. are mechanisms to keep the seedlings from germinating until the time is right. 
and it's either a hard seed coat or there's chemicals that build up that have to break down or the embryo has to keep growing for a while. Um, hard seed coat, you can, you can scarify it, just put it between two pieces of uh, sandpaper and rub right. it back and forth a few times, or you can nick it, um, nicking away from the end that was attached to the flower, that's where the embryo is, uh, or you can soak it. Um, my books say start at 190 degrees, so not quite boiling water, start it hot, just let it cool for 24 hours. Um, and there are some seeds that need scarification, as some of the seeds be things like hibiscus and lupin and baptisia, or Continue Kentucky coffee tree. You have to actually drill a hole. You have to get a little drill and drill a hole in these, or it'll be years before they, the mm -hmm. seed coat. Because first you have to break open this pod, which is like iron. Then the seeds are like iron. Um, I, I picked this seed to do a test on when I was in school and sterification. And I can't remember which method worked the best. Yeah. I did different ways. Well, the guy that I talked to said, I need a, a, a drill, a certain small drill. And he would drill a hole on the side mm -hmm. away from where it was connected. So it's connected to the mother plant up here. He'd drill this other side in order to make a hole so water could get in and soften the seed coat. Because once it, on one side of the, this is a pea germinating, there's the embryo, the first root, and the first shoot are the embryo and it's on one side the side that was attached to the to the flower part and so if you're going to do any nicking um do it on the side the away side. from the embryo so this side underneath here is attached if you got a nick which you don't do with clivia um, that's kind of a fleshy fruit sometimes there's chemicals in the seed coat and they have to break down and you soak the seed um, Sea pinks, parsnips, parsley. Parsley is one of the reasons you, you, you soak it. It gets, it leaches some of those chemicals out. Um, I've never had any problem with parsley. I mentioned that earlier, never soak it. Yeah. So I don't know. <laughs> yeah, so, it, and I guess that would be it. There is another thing in a book that I read that you have to actually, if you want curly parsley, you have to stamp on the seed. <laughs> This one's <laughs> called Extra Curl Dwarf. But that somebody works was just, just fine there. for me. <laughs> Where they hire little elves, little garden elves. Oh, yeah, stuff on the seed. Seed. Um, but if the seed has, has uh, flesh around it, like service berry does, for instance, you need to clean this, the fruit off generally in order to get it to germinate, which is what happens when birds eat it. They eat it and they poop out just the seed, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. With a little bit of uh, fertilizer with it. So uh, Jack in the Pulpit, you want to grow... Um, the Japanese jack in the pulp, the black jacks from seed, then you've got to wait for the seed to ripen. You can't take it at this stage. You've got to wait. Wait until it ripens. Like Karen said, patience, wait. And then you've got to, you got to soak or strip or somehow clean the, clean the seed to get it to germinate more quickly. Um, a lot of seed needs a cool, moist period, usually um, uh, 30 to 90 days, it depends um, on the species, but 30 days is kind of a minimum. At 40 degrees, moist. You don't have to freeze it. I used to put the seed packets in the freezer and then I realized, A, they're dry, mm -hmm. doesn't work, and freezing is not necessary, but moisture is required, which is what happens out there to the, to the iris. They sit there cold and accumulating moisture and breaking down until finally they mm -hmm. drop out and can start the next year. Or your seeds. Um, Aconitum is one of the ones, monkshood, that needs the seed. Is, if the seedlings all sprouted, this is Aconitum carmichaeli, the, um, the late, very late fall blooming, October blooming. It, by the time its seed ripens, they'd be killed. So it yeah. has a, a dormancy. Um, so dogwoods, hellebores, hostas, dicentra, golden rain tree, uh, which is beautiful yellow flowers, and then seed pods all over it. Later on, it has this, this uh, hard seed that needs to get cold. And if I look in Norman Dino's book on seed germination theory and practice, which is a very, it's a great book to have. It's very dense. I have to read it as it, it takes 70 degrees, so a warm period, then a cold period, then another warm period before it germinates. And at the end of the, the, the cold period, in about 12 weeks, it start, the seeds start splitting open. They start actually absorbing enough water to split open and uh, dry stored seed, 90% uh, in two days it went, once they got warm after that cold period. Um, but you have to read the 
key back and forth and back and forth to understand this book. Um, moist, aerated environment, so you can put it outdoors, put it out in the fall, put it out in the early spring when you've got at least, like they say, um, at least eight weeks before or at least yep. four weeks before, it'll say on the package. Or you can sow them and refrigerate them. So you take your seed that needs to be, needs some cold treatment and you put it on a moist paper towel. So this is windflower, task flower. Fold the towel over, slide it into a paper baggie where you've marked when you sewed it. Fold the paper baggie over. You don't have to twist tie, just fold it over, put it in the refrigerator and leave it for those 30 days or 60 days, then bring it out and you can sew it. That method works very, very well, but you can simplify it too if you have the space. Like say you have a spare refrigerator, you can actually sew right in your containers, your seed yeah. germination container, and then put those in the fridge. Yeah. I have a fridge that I use pretty much just for seeds, so it works for me. Yeah, mm. and that's and that's our problem is that we don't have the room, but this way we can stack up a whole bunch of right. outlets. Yeah. And um, I'm just chiming in to say uh, that we are 10 minutes out. I'm hoping we can do uh, a demo if you've got the time, maybe. Yeah. Thank you. Excellent. So we'll, we'll do that. Um, okay, so some seed needs to go cold, cold, warm, cold, warm, like more than one year. Um, bleeding heart, it's um, it's the third cycle before you start getting it. We're still getting, we said 20% germination, then 11% germination. They, it, so some of it takes a long time and dry storage, DS is fatal. So people say, why doesn't my bleeding heart um, seed around the garden, our seeds are all over the place. It, it can't dry out. You can't let it dry out. Yep. Um, trillium takes a couple of years. Dictaminus, do you remember Francis Hughes, Karen? Yes. I told him that I was trying to grow dictaminus from seed. He said, not much luck there, huh? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I said, yeah, I got one to germinate, one, because it takes a, a, a cold period and uh, you got to wait for the seed to ripen and then you got to put it a cold period and usually a couple cold periods. So we've got some good books for you. Uh, they're listed in your outline. Park Success with Seed and Seed Germination Theory and Practice, as well as catalogs are our favorite ones. And um, like I say, it's a little dense reading uh, the theory and practice, but once you get it, it's got a lot of information in there for you. And there are some that are two-stage germination, like oak trees. They're gonna need the warm period in the fall and they germinate, they sprout below ground, but they don't come up above ground until so the springtime. Spring. So this, it takes that long for the seed to be able to absorb enough water to crack open and, uh, and complete germination. And there are some things that have double dormancy. You might have to soak the seed and scrape the seed or soak the seed and, 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 and you just play around with them. I'll tell you in the books. Lupin, we'll have to give these lupin seeds to somebody that we brought some, bought some lupin seeds just to take pictures of them and, and uh, they're not Uncle Axel's. They're not going in our yard. Not going in our yard. Hibiscus, if they manage to set seed for us in Michigan, we're at the northern edge and they don't always set seed. Kevin was explaining to us that he had a whole computer program for how to make sure that they got germinated in time to set seed and collect mm -hmm. the seed and then he'd have to scare, um, uh, scrape the seed. Okay. So what questions do we have? And then we'll go into a, uh, um, a demo. You no, know, we actually, we don't, we don't have uh, much. Um, just quickly, Stacy, any, is asking about any recommendations for seeds that would be great for young kids or toddlers. I said the, the big seeds, the bees and pea, uh, pea, peas and beans. Any other kid seed recommendations in particular? We think big seeds too, the, and, and seeds that germinate readily inside so they can see them germinate this this time of year so we're talking about uh beans peas sunflowers mm -hmm. um lettuces are cool because you can put the pot on yeah. so you can sow a whole pot of lettuce and set it outside where it's cool or in a garage where it's cool let it germinate and then bring it inside um i'm trying to see if i can spotlight us sonia there we go oh yeah um you should be yeah. there you go oh you got it yep i figured it um, out how about that yep and then uh, uh, it looks like Susan was saying, have you heard you can use cut off paper towel tube inch, two inches tall for planting seeds, set in a tray, then plant the seedling paper tube and all. Stacy said she's had success there. I said, I would probably splice the sides myself just to be sure, but do you have any suggestions or recommendations for that? Well, depending on what shape the paper is in, the paper tube or, or the paper cup, 
when it's time for planting. I'll peel it off or peel it down. You just don't want to have paper or anything that can wick moisture out of the soil up into the air around your seedling or the roots won't be able to grow out of it. Sure. Um, my favorite homemade container is a, is a paper cup if I'm looking for something else. And the kids can help with this where I've got a stack of cups and I just make holes in the bottom with a, a steak knife. The kids love to do this. Um, and then I'll put those into a container. I thought I had one set up, but I guess I didn't. Nope. Um, I'll fill those with, with potting mix and set four or five of them into a container like this and let them soak. Now, the, this is the uh, containers that we got from uh, burpees that I, I like these. I like being able to push the soil out at, uh, the seedling out and I like being able to reuse them. I've uh, already soaked these in some bleach water. 10% bleach solution, and then filled them with a soilless potting mix, which you can't. Yeah. This, this pot has been tamped down. Moistened too. Yeah, well, yeah. and I start, I, I moisten the potting mix first in a bottom, in a, uh, a solid big bowl or bucket. I put soil, I put water in and I mix it until mix it's, it's moist. So moist. Or you put the soil into your container and then set that container into water, which it's going to take a couple hours, depending on how deep the container is, to soak in. But what you want is for it to gently, um, like, like Karen says, don't be pouring water if on If you top pour the stuff. water on it, it'll push Hard. it all down. And you want that at right at the level. We mentioned how the, the airflow helps. Yeah. So. And this particular pot is going to go outside on the kids, uh, our son's deck for the rabbit. Where's the lettuce? This rabbit gets its own, gets its own salad every day. And uh, very soon, lettuce will be germinating out there. And um, it's funny that he's trying to keep rabbits out of the garden and I'm trying to feed the feed rabbit. rabbit. The time. <laughs> uh, but, uh, and, and it's funny because the kids say, can the rabbit eat that? I go, can the rabbit eat that? I have to beat them off with a stick so it doesn't eat it in the oh, garden. Will we'll be every... okay? Well, yeah, it'll be fine. So the tap tap method that's, uh, that uh, Karen and I were talking about, I, I I just crease the front of the so there's a little a little uh, crease in the front, and then I'm just going to tap the. Of course, I tap all the time now. I should have Steve do this. I can try. Yep. And then they're coming. Slowly. Gonna get them to the front. First. Yeah, lead them. Yep, a little farther. All right, everybody, get up here. Stop they're gonna come off this side. Oh, oh, okay. All right, so they're just gonna come off the regular crease. Yep. There's one, one two. two. Some more. Last coming. year, I let the kids sow this. The lettuce came up so thick in some places and thin in other places. Last year. We were doing hearts for the sake of the first line uh, responders at the hospitals. So we outlined a heart out in the garden, a big heart, and made it all of multicolored lettuce. It's quite pretty. So there they are, they're dropping out one at a time. And they work. And that's, uh, that works. And lettuce, I can just firm down. And um, this will be able to, we'll, we'll sow more lettuce in here after they harvest the first lettuce for the bunny. We'll sow more lettuce in there. And, and they'll have a place where they can just step outside on the deck and, and put more stuff in there. Um, and from the refrigerator, Steve in all the corners of the refrigerator was pulling out the seeds that are there. <laughs> we have uh, something weak on top of this one. We have seed that we've labeled when we collected it and how long it's been there. And this has been five years we've been germinating this seed. And this is Colverteria or Golden Rain Tree from the uh, Cornell Arboretum. Yeah. Because <laughs> we have a bunch of different ones. It's a large seed. Um, we like this tree a lot. And this particular tree is a Golden Rain Tree that didn't die back when a lot of Golden Rain Trees died, died back in Michigan. This one, which was planted in the 1940s, didn't die back and it blooms a month later than the others do. It's probably the variety called September. So we've been collecting seed from that one. 
And this seed is a hard coat seed that needs a cold treatment. And it also can benefit by just putting it between two pieces of sandpaper. If you can hold it. And chasing it down. It doesn't take much. No. If you look at it with a magnifier, you'll see that there's little scrapes on it now. And then it could go into its own depth. And a little bit of seed, a little bit of uh, potting mix. You probably just picked the lettuce seed up. Was that the lettuce? Yes. Oh, I went through. Oh. Well, okay, so now we have lettuce <laughs> coming up in here too. Um, and I forgot to bring the popsicle sticks down. Oh. So we don't, there's my cups. I knew I had one with cups in it. No, I just did it. So tell me what questions you've got that we can show you what's going on here. And, uh, and we'll and try not to that. spill seed all over we'll try the not table. To spill seed all over the table, right? I actually, I, I don't think that we have any new questions coming in. I think we are kind of, uh, kind of just, just uh, watching the, uh, um, watching the excitement. Uh, Catherine did mention in the conversation about uh, paper towel tubes, um, the those egg cartons that are like fibery, um, would those also work? Yeah, they would. And, and the, the fiber doesn't break down. That's even um, more enduring than toilet paper rolls. So that's one that I would probably end mm -hmm. up breaking the edges off of. They, it's the same consistency that the, the uh, cardboard uh, uh, press board egg cartons are the same as what they put the roses in when they and they tell you to plant the rose right in those containers. I have dug roses out of the ground that were planted in containers like that that are still, still in the container, container years later because yeah. the container didn't break down, um, didn't get wet enough to break down. So here we've got um, so jars. Uh, I have a whole bucket full of baby food jars out in the garage, yeah. but instead of that, I have this other jar here. It tells me I have big, big leaf magnolia. I need to soak off the pulp and Chinese jujube vine from Resnicek in uh, 2021. So these are the ones that I'm going to see today. Yeah. And I've taken the pulp off of the, um, the big leaf magnolia. It's going to need cold treatment, which is strange for a big leaf magnolia, but 40 degrees is not terribly cold. Those I'm going to put three seeds in each of the containers. I'll let Stephen do that. See if into what containers? Into this one right here. Just remember that I've already got a golden rain tree in the first one. Three in each one? Yep. But we only want to do like two. Two in each container. Three seeds, but we only want to do like two cells. Oh. Because we want to get some other stuff there. Then I've got um, a seed pod from the Perodia relative. <laughs> I'm going to have to admit to Tony that I was not taking enough notes while we were talking and going through. I've got to break the seed pod open in order to get the seeds out of it. Because this is the pod, not the seed. Might take a hammer, might take the pliers. I've seen people plant whole pods. What, what did I see people plant whole pods? Detura, uh, angel's trumpet. There's a big pod on it that looks kind of like a, a, a mace. And I've seen people just plant the whole pod. Well, <laughs> yes, you know, they will grow, but you're gonna have a whole bunch of seedlings coming up like when the mulberry fruit falls and you got mm -hmm. a whole bunch of little mulberry trees coming up. How do you divide? Place. Yeah, I'm gonna keep those in Separate. here. There was a big leaf magnolia across the street from my sister's house in Livonia. And I used to watch the gentleman who lived in that house, but who did not plant the tree, try to rake up the leaves in the fall. Yeah. I and mean, these leaves are literally this big, like a big piece of newspaper. And he finally one year said, I'm not messing with this tree anymore. And he cut Chop. it down. He just chopped it right at ground level. <laughs> It grew back, what, was it six feet, seven yeah. feet tall? Yeah, and the leaves were twice, twice as size. big because they were juvenile leaves, so they were even bigger. Um, uh, eventually, he sold that property, and they uh, took that double lot and built the yeah. house on top of it, so that Two tree houses. was gone. But I wouldn't mind having that tree, a great tree to have. Looks like I'm Can not I... Uh... Yeah. Can I break into ask Stacy's wondering if a nutcracker would help to uh, to break the pod? Yeah, and... And I, I was also thinking, I think it was Stacy who uh, noted that um, labeling everything you want to use beforehand is, uh, you'll, you'll thank yourself later. Uh, I was thinking about you with, uh, I had the popsicle sticks, where'd they go? Much like cooking, um, get all your prep work 
done and get yeah. your stations together before you launch in and, and that will be uh, greatly to your advantage. Even with a checklist, you still forget some things sometimes. Yeah. To and add I, to yeah. the checklist, the popsicle stick, simple. So now we have to remember golden rain tree, magnolia, magnolia. Yeah, um, last, year, last year I managed to forget. Catherine is asking if you have any sources um, that you particularly like regarding the delightful lesser known, which delightful lesser known imported plants will be invasive. Yeah, yeah, nothing in particular. No, that's, that's something. Yeah. Yeah, that's something that takes time and people growing it in a lot of different places to figure out because um, there are a lot of plants that um, are invasive in certain situations, and you don't know until people start yeah. growing them. I and mean, there are plants that we didn't know were invasive for 50 years after they got introduced into cultivation in North America, and then it's kind of too late because everybody's got them planted all over the place and. Or and, that and they are attached to them. That have developed seed or right. that they didn't expect. Right. Others get uh, invasive in one situation, but not in others and get listed unfairly, I think, as invasive. Uh, as invasive. Yep. Yeah, it's, it's um, a tough thing to do. We'll do invasive plants next week. So is yep. that continue? and Oh my gosh. It's we, yep, we are at time. And Jane was asking, do you have any tips for thinning the seedlings? Pulling versus clipping with scissors? Oh, when we when we thin, I I cut I clip to thin. Karen, if you're still there, do you clip to thin or do you pull? I, I don't. Well, know. Well, we don't really thin. We use every seedling, <laughs> and if there are extras, we throw them in the compost. So we just transplant until we have enough, and then we throw them out. So we don't really have a situation where we need to thin because we always sow then transplant. If we're in the garden, you know, I would I would probably just pull them. Yeah. When I'm when I'm thinning, yeah, in the garden direct. So we just we just pull out the ones we don't want. Right. In a, in a flat where I've got extra, I'll clip them off because I don't want to pull. Out. If I want to keep growing them on in a flat like this, I'll clip off the ones I don't want. And be be careful if you're growing things like a mix of snapdragons or a mix of impatiens. It you might have a tendency to just keep the well. Most of us would want to keep the sturdiest looking ones. You but sometimes the red blooming one is the one that's slower to grow and it's smaller than the others. So you might want to keep some diversity if you've got a mix. So true. That is absolutely true with seed mixes. You just never know. So you want to keep some babies, the the slow germinators and the ones that are weaklings, and some of the vigorous ones. Yeah. They'll be the different colors. Yeah, you learn you learn each seed, um, like stock, which is a seed that it's another thing that I think people should be growing because you can't buy stock and it smells so, so wonderful. Good. But the ones that are going to be doubles, the nicest, uh, most impressive dramatic flowers, they've got a different leaf than the other ones do, and you've got to watch for that different leaf. And and you you learn that as you go along. It's one of the reasons that we like the Success with Seeds books so much, is because um, in each page where um, the seed is, the plant is listed, they have a picture of what the first seed leaf looks like so that you have some idea what you're looking Ooh, for to come up. Yeah. Is that the Parks book there? Parks book, and it's out of print, so you have to order, you have to buy it used, but it's it's worth looking for and it's out there. Yeah, I have a, I have a different version, I think. Mine has um, Karen Park Jennings on the cover. You had Ann Riley as the author. Ann Riley Mine, as the, yeah. yeah. Like, so I don't know which is newer. Mine is uh, copyrighted uh, 2006. Uh, oh, yours is newer than mine is then. I didn't realize that they reissued it. Maybe there's more of them out there because this one's the 78. I mean, this is my original park seed. Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. It, it's just a different cover. I imagine that there may be some slight revisions to the text, but yeah, it's, it's really a good one for basic seeds. You know, if you're interested in all the weird stuff, then the Norm Deno book is very good. But yeah. this one... It's a, it's like a, a little Bible. Yep. And I will continue learning about my parodia here and we'll, uh, we'll sign off saying that next week, join us next week. We're going to be talking right. about, can we, can we go can to the end? Well, we have to, we, we, we don't have a, we don't have a jump. So no, that's, uh, we, we can just uh, talk about it. And I just want to say out loud too, that those recommended uh, books are in the handout. So park success with seeds you can find on the last page, yep. the sixth page of the handout. Yeah, along with a list of uh, some things that are kind of easy to grow and you want to get a try. <laughs> we'll see you next week when we talk about invasive plants. Those of you who are, are uh, visiting us just for this week, we've got a new season coming up. 
that if you subscribe to the new season, you can, um, we'll start your subscription right away and you could catch the end of the season without extra charge. But we also have a way now where you can do a webinar at a time if you Tell like. If you are. Take a look at our website uh, under webinars and subscribe. Yeah, you will know, click webinars and then click subscribe. Yeah. Thank you all very much for being here. Thank you so much, Karen, for joining us. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. And enjoy watching your plants come up in the spring without having to worry about how many you have out and whether you've got your pricing out and your catalogs out. Enjoy your own garden this year. Thank you. All right. Take care, everybody. Take care, everybody. Thanks, everyone. Have a great weekend.